Today I'm not interviewing anyone, but I have a very special guest who is sitting next to me. I'm very curious to see what our guest has to say about their own insecurity. Well, you can see from that photo, that was the photo that I took, I think, back in sixth grade. And that was the first and last time that I got bangs for myself. I remember how, you know, everyone was, since I was little, people would comment on my forehead. Like, that would be the first thing that they tell me when they first meet me. When I was younger, it was fine. But, like, once I enter middle school and then high school, you know, your body starts changing. And then you start caring about how you look to other people, what other people think about you, friends, crush at school, adults around you. I remember feeling very alert whenever somebody look at me, stare at me, because I felt like, oh, if you stare at me for such a long time, you're gonna look at my forehead. And in Vietnam, we used to have this superstition, it doesn't happen now anymore, where people would go to the Hanoi Temple, which is the capital city of Vietnam, to touch the heads of the stone turtles. So these stone turtles inscribed like the names of all the scholars back in the days. It was a superstition that if you touch their heads before an exam or like an important event, then you can get good luck. Because so many of my friends back in high school were talking about my forehead. One of them was telling the whole school, including primary school kids. So my school was very small. So basically you can kind of like see everyone. My friend told everyone that if you can touch Yan's forehead, then you'll be really lucky. And so I, like I would just walk, you know, normally going from this class to another class at school. And then there was this one kid who always did this. Like he was super short, super small, and he would run out of nowhere just like jumping up and like touch my forehead. Like imagine you're just walking, minding your own business. And then this one random kid just like walk past you, jump up, touch your forehead and then ran away. It was like I was too stunned to even say anything. But yeah, that was kind of funny. But I think even until recently as well, I thought a lot about my own forehead. I remember asking my mom when I was younger to allow me to and bring me into a salon and allow me to have bangs she wouldn't allow it and i only started having this idea to record myself talking about this right now literally today because i was washing my hair today's hair wash day there's no i i, I never really went to a salon in the u.s i have this one specific salon near my house where there's this one specific person who would always cut my hair uh, because he knows, you know, the correct length that I want and how I want to cut it in a way. Like, for example, this, this part shouldn't be this long. It should be a bit shorter so I can, you know, just flip my hair this way. I'm only going home in February, so I still have a few months before then. I've been complaining to my friends and my family recently that my hair is getting really long. One of the reasons why I used to be really annoyed with hair, my hair getting longer back in the days, I would say two or three years ago, was the fact that, you know, if it's too long, I can't hide my forehead. You know, if it's too long, then the only way I can style my hair is maybe put it behind my ears or or you know put it like this and if i do that then i'm showing my forehead today i was looking at into the mirror and i was like wait actually like it doesn't look that bad if if i just put it like this or if i just put my hair up together and without having to you know cut my hair a certain way where i can flip my hair and hide my parts of my big forehead when i look back to middle school or high school i did try my best to distract myself from feeling insecure about my own forehead. I remember me telling myself that, you know, I actually have Rihanna's forehead. Um, I, actually, a lot of supermodels 
have big foreheads like mine. But at that point, it was just an excuse uh, that I created for myself to distract myself from thinking so much about it. So I don't think I fully embrace it. But today, when I finally accepted my own hair, my own face, where my hair is not covering my forehead, I realized that that would actually be the way for me to embrace um, my own insecurity. Well, every single person has their own insecurity, but what do we do with it? Like, how do we deal with our fear of our own insecurity? How do I embrace it so I can live my life happily? I can live my life without trying to cover parts of my body or parts of myself yeah like it just got me thinking i'm filming this without covering my acne i've been having an acne breakouts because i've been too stressed out with work and some other personal stuff you know a few days ago when when the acne started appearing i really was i wasn't proud of it i wasn't proud of the fact that my face is having an acne breakout i wasn't proud of the fact that you know why did i let myself be so stressed out to the point where it's even showing on my face and especially yesterday morning i woke up to this really big acne on my forehead and i have nothing else to say today is the second day where the acne is still there but the bigger question is why am i more concern about my acne showing on my forehead than any other parts of my face you know it should be normal i don't think i have a clear answer to for myself how do i embrace my own insecurity but today was the first step that i took and i hope that you also start to think about how you can embrace your own insecurity in your body